Hey everyone, welcome to Cover Call ETF Investing, your central hub for deep Cover Call ETF data. And today's video, we'll be looking at the Cover Call ETF All Star Tracker, a Google Sheet I've created to specifically look at what uh, Cover Call ETFs I plan to invest in to live off of. These aren't going to be funds that I uh, compound away over time. No, they're going to be specifically meant to supplement uh, costs uh, once I uh, venture into a taxable account, which should be getting uh, probably the tail end of 2024 or near the beginning of 2025. By mid 2025, for sure, I'll be I'll be with the taxable account. So if you like what you see from the tracker, head over to the description below or the very first comment that you see, there'll be a link to my Patreon so that you can level up your cover call ETF game um, and your understanding uh, to look for opportunities and red flags. So with that being said, let's get into the video. All right, guys, now I, I want to talk about um, funds I plan to invest in or funds I plan to live off of uh, living here in Canada and more specifically Vancouver the most well I mean you know if um, you know if you live in Toronto and you're watching this like we're, we're kindred spirits when it comes to affordability and right trying to achieve our goals with just this high with big real estate prices and all the rest of that but what funds could we ideally live off of in Canada and why that is so I'm gonna I have three funds I wanted to uh, show you all that that I plan to invest in, in in a taxable account. Some of these funds are in my TFSA currently. So one being UMAX, one being E and CL, and the other one being bank. So let's just run through these funds. So here in Canada, it is of my opinion that it's hard to get, it's hard to when you're comparing and wanting to build a portfolio of like Canadian listed stuff versus American listed stuff. And no doubt we all want our portfolios to grow. Now, when it comes to just general, the idea of growth in general, I absolutely think way more to the American side of things. I think there's much more potential there for price growth. There's much more, well, and that's really the key is price growth over on the American side of things. So I'm planning my TFSA to be more geared towards that, more American exposure um, towards growth in that regard. Still attaining a really si a really good yield between, you know, across the whole the, the whole TFSA about, you know, 10 to 12%. But when it comes to the Canadian side of things, I'm not as optimistic about our chances of price appreciate here in Canada across big funds or big companies. I just, um, compared to the American side of things, I think you gotta play, well, for me anyway, I have to play the American side of things a little bit differently. I have to tamper those expectations and just go about it a bit differently. So in my case, I actually think that the Canadian landscape in regards to cover call ETFs is much more primed for literally cover calls themselves. I know it's a smaller market for cover calls. I, I understand that. But as far as I think doing better long term, I think uh, total return with cover calls in the long run in Canada, uh, I think, you know what, the Canadian market probably just for the most part will trade sideways. I know energy certainly does that. And banks and utilities, I mean, I mean how much... How much can the big six banks really grow? They're not going to grow like tech companies. They're just boring, steady eddy. They'll produce a dividend every year, even if even if you just buy the regular um, stock versions of them. But anyway, let's go through this. So I plan to hold three funds, three sector funds, with basically the idea of maximum yield here in Canada. This gets me to my goal faster of selling off my home, renting a house, and using the equity from you know my family's con like from my condo uh, that you know I live with my wife my kids uh, we can use that equity to get into these three funds and the way it's basically calculated is based on the current house rents here in my target neighborhood a suburb of, of Vancouver 
Um, it, my costs actually won't change. So these are going to be the best funds and able to do. And I like all these funds. Bank, I currently don't invest in, but UMAX and ENCL are both in my TFSA. I'm no longer contributing to them because eventually I'm going to just sell them off. They won't be part of my TFSA anymore. And then I will re-up in a taxable account. Once I max out my TFSA, um, you know, basically I would say in either at the end of this year or early next year. But let's go through some of the yields. I mean, you're going to get basically 16% between the two of them if you were to do that strategy right now. Uh, they have awesome trading volume, which as you guys know, for following this channel, I like to... I like to follow trading volume and liquidity. I want to make sure that my funds that I invest in um, have enough liquidity as I potentially sell off or I buy that I'm not paying more than I should because that's a knock-on effect with e-liquid funds. Uh, again, if you're if a fund is trading kind of in the low, you know, the high hundreds, low hundreds, right, somewhere about around a thousand, maybe that's when you would just need to look at. Um, say this AUM tab here in the tracker, right? You just need to follow, oh, actually it's this one. You just need to follow what is the, what is the average volume trading at every month and is it going up, is it going down? I mean, that's ultimately, if you have the tracker, that's what you wanna uh, just keep your eyes peeled to. Now we got performance over the last, you know, six months or so, we got 5%, 5, well, almost 6%, 5%. UMAX is down a little bit, but you know, utilities highly affected by uh, interest rates. And um, and even though I don't have total return, that's gonna get added in July, you'll see a total return column for one month, six month, year to date, and one year as well. Whereas you can see over here, I do have total return for three year and five year, but so many of these funds haven't been around for that long. So come the July tracker, uh, that's all going to include it. And it's also going to be live as well, which is pretty exciting, uh, where these numbers will change like basically every 20 minutes or so. Okay, now here's the thing with, with these industries uh, that I should probably speak to. Um, you know, if, if we do go the whole, you know, green transition, you know, I don't think oil, that's not going anywhere, it is so ingrained into society, so ingrained into our industries that you can't just cut it off and expect new technologies just to happen overnight. <clears throat> it's not going to happen that way. You probably need to ramp up oil. You need to ramp up you know, mining. You need to ramp up these other kind of fossil fuel driven industries in order to make that, in order to build out the infrastructure for that kind of transition. Time will tell whether that that actually happens or not. But as far as oil is concerned, it's been it's been basically trading at the same price for the last 20 years. So when I talk about things, you know, staying fairly like trading sideways, it's like oil is a really good example of that. So you'll get a great yield with that. Banks, uh, bank by Evolve has the big six banks and a couple of. Uh, you know, life insurance company, other financial service companies, these are big entities. How much can they really grow, even with great earnings and great, right? I think there, there's very much perception of investing in Canada is, right, high taxes, affordability stinks, and, you know, no doubt that's going to have a knock-on effect with bigger institutional investors across the globe, who's coming to Canada, who's not. Um, so I am less uh, excited about just price performance from banks over the long term. And then UMAX. Um, what I like a lot about UMAX is that it doesn't just have traditional um, utility companies in it like Fortis and Amera. It has things like it has railroads. It has telecoms like Rogers, Telus, and maybe Bell might be in there as well. Uh, you're right, it has CN Rail. It's 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 got those. It's got pipelines like Pembina, and I think Enbridge is is a part of it as well. So, it these are all um, sectors that that we need for industry. We need to, for our daily lives. We still need banks. We still need like insurance. We still need all that good stuff. Uh, we still need utilities. We still need oil. And to me, I just like boring sectors like that because they are predictable that's the biggest reason why i like them so much stable stability and predictability 
So as we head across here, we see the management fee, higher management fees for, well, I would say bank and UMAX probably within more the typical one. Energy, for whatever reason, I've seen on the, not, I wouldn't say high, but it, it trend, it's trending a little bit higher. I think 0 0.65 is usually what typically uh, you would see. That's the average for the cost of managing a fund. Now the MER uh, is one, is 1.7 this is again the all the all-in costs right bank has leverage as you can see here along with the ncc they have 25 percent leverage to enhance uh performance uh price performance and the yield as well so this will include leverage costs trading costs uh it'll include this cost it'll include marketing costs custodial cost. like basically it's just the total costs that's all it is we see portfolio coverage which is actually pretty interesting. That bank has the highest yield. Uh, does it have the highest yield? No, not well, not higher than ENCL, but yeah. but of all the the bank cover call ETFs here in Canada, it's got the highest. But yet its coverage is a lot smaller. So it, it would be interesting to kind of get behind the scenes here of like how um, Evolve is able to do that. But just means more gets to participate if there is growth. Let's say I'm wrong and banks, you know, go on a tear and they grow. Well, you're in. It, it would appear that you're in a better position with bank for more of the portfolio to participate in that growth versus these other funds where. Um, they're just a higher coverage. So higher coverage typically usually means higher yield, but less price appreciation. They got good size AUMs, uh, UMAX, uh, Bank, even ENCL, even though it's the smallest of the three, it's underlying ENCC, uh, which is basically this fund without 25% leverage, has, um, I wanna say it's something like 300 and some odd million. So it's underlying is really good. In that regard, uh, dividend streaks. Bank has been paying out great dividend streak. ENCL hasn't been around that long, but it's basically been paying out uh, the same, the same distribution since um, its inception. And then we can see here, like when these funds came out, October 2023. So, well, that falls right in line with uh, how long it's been out for. UMAX, it kind of bounces a little around a little bit as far as its distribution. Overall, I would say it's stable. Its lifetime um, distribution change is 2%, like negative 2%. I am not worried about that at all. For the kind of yield you're getting, the kind of uh, industry diversification you're getting with, and that's, a, again, that's, and so, that's important to remember. There's sector diversification, and then there's industry diversification. Industry typically falls under sector and uh, you get amazing industry diversification within within UMAX. And then Bank uh, has, since its inception back in February 2022, has been, uh, has gone up 42, and like almost 43%. And it's a stable fund, great growth from Bank. And I, you know, I notice Evolve has been doing that with a bunch of their funds. They've been upping the, the distribution um, the anyway they've been increasing their distributions on the regular okay so with these three funds let's actually go have a look at um actually you know what we'll look at aum just see how they're doing as far as uh we'll look at just the overall health of how these funds are growing over time uh, so we got nco we got umax and we got bank let's go Okay, so have a look at these funds. All green, 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 green across the board. Now, again, this month uh, for this tracker, uh, putting in the AUM uh, percentage change between each month of how it's grown or how it's declined is new. And anyway, it's just a great way of seeing the overall health of, of maybe a strategy you want to employ. So this is a strategy I'm going to employ and look at it. Not a single red, bit of red anywhere. Year-to-date change in AUM, 83%, 169% for ENCL and UMAX, 46%. So all these funds growing healthily, lots of, lots of 
AUM. And, and these are funds that are, it's, it's nice to look forward to continued health, but as things change, if a year from now, for some reason, if like one of these funds was suffering, I would just pivot into maybe an alternative for UMAX or, or an alternative for bank. Maybe it might be HMAX or maybe it might be BKCL. If for some reason, this fund is not doing as well as uh, I think it should for my specific goals. And when I say meaning doing well, I just mean, you know, keeping up with its 16% yield. You know, if any of these funds price wise just go berserk, um, then it has less relevance to me. I'm looking for yield to offset my costs here in Canada. That is my strategy going forward. So. Uh, let me know, you know, what what your guys' strategy is, um, and it, it, would you try to employ something similar? But again, I could, I could see, I can, I don't know if, to me, I don't know if there there is um, a better utility fund for my purpose than Umax or or even ENCL Bank. There are some options with BKCL and HMAX that are out there that are leveraged that get you up to that higher that higher yield. Um, but so maybe the only one I could really see changing out might be bank, but, uh, but as far as I'm concerned, these are the three going forward, um, here in Canada, sure you can, or you could even get, you could even add in an end. I've even considered adding in, uh, an index fund like CNCL leverage, but, uh, we'll see how that one does over time. I'm okay. Just investing in the sectors. Cause this is pretty much all Canada is, is banks energy and utilities and yeah we don't have much as far as other sectors are concerned so these are the big three in my opinion um and yeah so let me know what you all think of that hopefully you enjoyed that small snippet from the cover call etf all-star tracker there is a two and a half hour video on my patreon uh that's full of all of june's content um, and as always, if you liked how the tracker was presented, then head over to my Patreon uh, in the description below or the very first comment that you see. So with that being said, hopefully you hit all the buttons of the like and subscribe variety and I'll see you all in the next video.